Halfway across, she saw the white blotches approaching her with slow, erratic movements. It bumped along unevenly, and at first she thought it might be inanimate. Its approach was so indirect and purposeless. Then it blundered nearer with that queer, bumpy gait, making sucking noises in the ooze and splashing as it came. In the starlight, she saw suddenly what it was, and for an instant her heart paused and sickness rose overwhelmingly in her throat. It was a woman, a beautiful woman whose white bare body had the curves and loveliness of some marble statue. She was crouching like a frog, and as Jarrell watched in stupefaction, she straightened her legs abruptly and leaped as a frog leaps, only more clumsily, falling forward into the ooze a little distance beyond the washing woman. She did not seem to see Jarrell. The mud-spattered face was blank. She blundered on through the mud in awkward leaps. Jarrell watched until the woman was no more than a white, wandering blur in the dark, and above the shock of that sight, pity was rising, an uncomprehending resentment against whatever had brought so lovely a creature into this, into blundering and frog leaps aimlessly through the mud with empty mind and blind, staring eyes. I'm Virgil, this is Literally Books, and I'd like to talk about C.L. Moore's Black God's Kiss. It's a sword and sorcery weird fiction story from 1934 and um, is very similar in some ways to uh, Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft's fiction. Um, Moore was a contemporary of those writers, but I want to say that she's very distinctly her own uh, writer and has her own style and I, I really enjoyed it because it was very refreshing. I did expect it to be um, I was a little concerned it might be a little bit derivative, and I didn't feel that it was at all. The story follows Jarelle of Joinery, who is the ruler of this sort of a pseudo-historical kingdom in France. It was definitely the impression I got was a sort of a medieval period. It's based on a couple of statements that are made. Uh, Rome has not long retreated from France. Um, and Jarelle at one point has a cross that she's holding. So, I mean, we're definitely led to believe that it's sort of in our history that this story takes place. Jarelle is the ruler of this uh, pseudo-historical kingdom in France and has been uh, taken over by uh, Guillaume. 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 I got it right. I've made that mistake many times. Uh, Guillaume has taken over the kingdom and has captured Jarelle. Um, he uh, kind of laughs at her and mocks her and then forces a kiss upon her before uh, she attacks him and then she's knocked unconscious. She wakes up in a prison cell in the dungeon, in the castle. She escapes this dungeon to sort of uh, find, a, find a way to deal with Guillaume. And this place that she knows about uh, is that is a uh, is sort of a hidden place that she goes to and she thinks that there's going to be something there that she can use to defeat him. I want to tell you a lot more about this story, but unfortunately, if I tell you too much, I feel like it will uh, ruin some of the story because unlike a Conan story where the experience of reading it is hard to spoil for somebody, if I told you Conan fought a giant snake, you'd be like, cool, but you'd still get the experience of reading that and the excitement that you get. I couldn't really take that from you. But if I told you, like, what happened in an H.P. Lovecraft story before you read it, you kind of lose a little bit. You know, part of that is an experience that you get to have. So I don't want to spoil what happens in this story because I think that's where C.L. Moore's work, at least this particular work, The Black God's Kiss, has a lot of emulation from some of the good stuff that we get from Lovecraft. This, like, alien strangeness and the unknown but what I really enjoy is that it is, does not like call upon uh, Cthulhu mythos type tropes. It does not, she doesn't use the same kind of Lovecraftian language that, you know, uh, like Lovecraft like words like Cyclopean and, uh, you know, Eldritch and that kind of stuff. Um, she doesn't use any of that language. And so as a result, it didn't feel like I was just reading somebody regurgitating Lovecraft to me, which is. We get a lot of that sometimes now because people are so obsessed with Lovecraft that they don't uh, they just reuse that imagery. What Moore does, similar to Lovecraft, is to sort of set up this um, world that we sort of believe in that could be history, and then she, you know, has this literal passage that Jarrell passes through, 
and goes into this um, this unknown, right? This this bizarre this bizarre place where strange things happen and uh, very good. It has a really great atmosphere of like creepiness and uh, eeriness and sort of unsettling atmosphere that still makes for a really engaging and entertaining read. Um, it definitely uh, felt like something like really like a really good Lovecraft story, you know, to me. It's like what it felt like, but except that it didn't um, it didn't deal with the same kind of characters that Lovecraft would deal with. I mean, Jarell feels like she could come from a Conan story, uh, but I don't think that it's very accurate to describe her as a female Conan. So I want to say that this is one of the better, if you know, definitely one of the best, I'd say, sword and sorcery type stories I've read before. You know, you tend to associate sword and sorcery with a lot of swords clashing and blood splurting and all that kind of stuff. And there wasn't really any of that. Um, it had a lot of characteristics that I would associate with weird fiction. Like, um, you know, like I said, Lovecraft, but really also um, like Algernon Blackwood or somebody like that. Or maybe even um, Clark Ashton Smith. In fact, I would say a lot of similarities to Clark Ashton Smith, uh, which is which is good because... I like Clark Ashton Smith. If you like Sword and Sorcery, if you've never read C.L. Moore, this is a really good story. I just think that you should not go into it with the same expectations you would have for a Conan story. I would uh, think of more like the weird fiction of uh, Blackwood or um, Clark Ashton Smith would probably be a much better way to approach this particular story. And, and I'm going to guess the other uh, Jarell stories because Jarell does appear, I know, in a number of other stories, at least four more, possibly more than that. Um, so that's it thanks for listening uh you can do the youtube stuff down below if you want to i'm hoping to sort of uh supplement this series maybe every two or three weeks at least you know just kind of a, like a little short video to put in there and just talk about something cool that i read in sword and sorcery so uh thanks for your time bye